Hello and welcome. In today's video, we're gonna talk about the initial assembly of a MIG welder. So here we have the Yes Welder MIG 205 DS, and as you can see, when you order this from Yes Welder, it comes with quite a bit of stuff. So we're gonna go through that stuff first and then talk about that initial setup because it can be a little daunting and intimidating if you haven't done it before. We're gonna tell you the correct way to do it. We're gonna give you some common mistakes people make that make life harder so you can avoid those and get to welding as fast as possible. So let's look at first what comes when you order Yes Welder's MIG 205 DS. You're gonna get an electrode holder clamp for stick welding. You're gonna get the ground clamp for both MIG and stick welding. This machine is wired for 220, but if you don't have a 220, Yes Welder's got your back. It can run in 110, and they send you with the adapter for that. It comes with a hose to hook up to your gas. And when you're MIG welding, you can use straight CO2. More typically, you're gonna use a 75-25 mix, 75% being argon, 25% being CO2. They're gonna send you with a liner for the MIG gun, should you want to run aluminum MIG. You will also need to purchase a spool gun separately. This is just the liner for inside. They're gonna send you different contact tips, the tool to change it, because you can run different size MIG wire in the 205DS, but you have to run the correct consumables. So instead of having to go buy more stuff, Yes Welder hooked it up and sends you all the things you need to run different sizes of wire. And along those same lines, they send you different size drive rollers. So we're gonna get into what a drive roller does once we actually get into the machine, but just know you are hooked up from Yes Welder with the drive rollers. Last but not least, you're gonna get the actual MIG gun itself. Now you will have to go get MIG wire. This right here is solid wire from Yes Welder that you can purchase at yeswelder.com. And we are gonna run 030. It's a fairly common size. 030 and 035 are gonna be the most common sizes of MIG wire. If you're doing thinner sheet metal or less intense jobs where you're running less amps, you're gonna go down to maybe like a, a a smaller wire size, 030 and 035 are gonna be very typical. If you're doing high amps, big, thick steel, you're gonna maybe go up to an 045. But because we don't really do much thick stuff here, I like to stick with 030 or an 035. So I'm gonna get all of this kind of a little bit more unpacked and get ready to start putting this together and show you how to get weld your way to welding with Yes Welder's MIG 205 DS. All right, so before we can actually start welding, we have to install the welding wire into the machine. This is where the spool is gonna go, which we're gonna get to in one second. But first we have to make sure that the drive roller is the correct drive roller for the welding wire we're using. And like I said, I'm using 030, which is 0.8 millimeters. Now, what drive rollers are, is it's actually a grooved wheel where the welding wire will actually sit in the groove. And I'll show that up close for a second. The welding wire will sit in the groove the drive roller will spin, and that's what drives and pushes the wire through the gun. The importance of having the correct size drive roller is if you're using one maybe where the groove is bigger than the welding wire you're using, it's gonna be very inconsistent feeding. It's not gonna work very well. If, you have, if you're using a drive roller that is too small for the welding wire you're using, you're actually gonna pinch and deform the welding wire, possibly messing up the contact tip on your gun, or just crimping wire and you're not gonna get a good quality weld. So let's look in the machine right now to figure out what drive roller is in here and if we have to change it. All right, so to access the drive rollers, we're gonna go over here and we're gonna turn this knob counterclockwise and that's gonna come off. Now, as we can see, the drive roller is a 0.9. So that's gonna be set up for like an 035 wire. So to get this out, we are actually going to, this is our tension. We're gonna slap this down, that releases this, and then the drive roller just slides off. There's nothing else keeping it on there, it slides right off. And here we can see on the drive roller it says 0.9. So what we need to do is find a drive roller that's 0.8, and here we are. 
here's our 0.8 drive roller. Now we're gonna, when we put this on, we're gonna ma make sure that we put it on with the notch in the correct spot. And by it saying 0.8 here, that means that this back slot is the correct one. So it's kind of confusing sometimes that people get a little confused. If you're reading 0.8, that does not mean that the front one is 0.8. It means the back one is 0.8 because that's actually when you put everything in here, it aligns with the back one, but it will say 0.8 on this side. So when you're looking at it, you know you're running the correct size drive roller. So to install a drive roller, you're just gonna slide it on with that slot in the correct spot. All right, I'm gonna put this back up so you can see that. There's that little slot. So this is down, we're gonna put this down. This is spring loaded. So we're just gonna hold this down and flip this up. So now we have the correct drive roller for the spool we are going to put in. Now let's talk about that. All right, so we've got the correct drive roller in and since we are using a solid wire, we're gonna use the 0.8 drive roller that has a smooth ring in it, not a zigzag one. If you look up close on other drive rollers, some of them, the actual groove will be like a zigzag and others will be a straight smooth one. If you're running solid wire, you want straight smooth. The zigzag is actually for running flux wire. So the zigzag is gonna grab that wire and push it through because it's a bit of a softer wire, right? Because there's flux involved, which you don't need to run a gas with flux. The flux is gonna protect the weld. If you're running solid wire, you do need your gas bottle, but solid wire is harder so you can use not a zigzagged drive roller, but a smooth straight one. If you get your drive rollers mixed up, that will mess up your wire. So just know if you're using flux core, you want the zigzag drive roller. If you're running solid wire, you want the smooth one, which we have in the machine right now. Now, when you, this is where most people kind of get a little messed up. When you're installing wire, this is one giant spring loaded spool of wire, right? So if you accidentally let it go, it's gonna unravel and your whole spool is ruined, which is a bummer. So we can just unwrap the outside. Then we have this piece of tape that we can just take off that's just protective. And then we can see our welding wire is wound in here. Now what we need to do is look around the outside to see where the end of it is. And here we can see the end of it is coming in right there. So when we put this in, we want to be thoughtful of where this end is. Undo this. Now this is a left-hand thread, okay? So to actually get this off, you need to spin it to the right, just because of the way it rotates when it's in the machine. Um, but if you do forget, no worries. Yes, Welder has said tighten, turn this way. So obviously loosen, turn the opposite way. Okay, the next thing we need to pay attention to is going to be this knob right here, because that knob is gonna have to go into this hole in our spool when we put it in. So let's get that lined up. All right, so I'm putting the spool in and I'm looking for that knob. All right, so I felt that knob click in. Now the next thing you wanna be thoughtful of is your wire is gonna come off the spool and go into this lining. Now this is the lining for just a regular solid MIG wire, not the aluminum one. This is the one that comes on the machine, right? Then your wire is going to go through here between the drive rollers and into your gun. All right, so here we have the welder and we have the end of our MIG gun and we're going to make sure that all of these posts when we put it in are going to line up with that and then we're going to screw it on. And since we run DCEP on MIG, we are going to plug this into the positive, leaving the negative open for our ground. All right, so now we're back here on the internals part. We have the machines plugged in, but the machine is off. That's very important. We are going to put this retaining ring back on, remembering that on this one, you actually do go counterclockwise to tighten. And we're gonna set it up so that the end of our wire, right, that's coming through here, is in this general area right here. Because remember, once we grab this with our fingers, if we let go, this whole thing is gonna unspool and ruin the wire, right? So to set ourselves up for success, cause it's kind of finicky, we are going to keep in mind the routing. It's gonna come off the bottom, it's gonna go through here and then through the drive rollers, right? So we're gonna take tension off our drive rollers. That way we can easily feed this through. All 
Okay, so here we have the end now. So this is the point of no return. I can't let go. You're gonna take a either a whelper or a snip and we're gonna cut that end off because it's kinked. And sometimes having some needle nose or something is easy, right? So now we're gonna take this and we're gonna go in here and we're gonna, I'm just gonna spin the actual spool a little bit as I pull it along just to help it. We have it, the wire is going into this part. It's sitting over our drive roller and it actually has to go into the physical gun itself. Now we have to pay attention to make sure it feeds well. So I'm gonna show you where it's supposed to go. All right, so we've now properly have it in the liner. It is on the drive roller in the correct groove. I still cannot let go until I flip down this top piece and then lock it in. Okay, so now we have tension on the wire with the two drive rollers and I can now safely let go of the wire and it won't unravel. We have it in the lining, drive rolls are clamped down. We don't have to hand, have our hands in the machine. We're now gonna turn it on. Normally you would actually close this to do this next part, but I'm gonna let it open just so you can kind of see the internals of the machine and how they work and why it works like it does. So I'm gonna turn the machine on. And then I'm just gonna depress the trigger on the gun and that's gonna signal it to go. And it's going to start moving that wire through the entire liner. This can take a little bit of time. If you think you did it wrong, I guarantee you didn't. And it's just taking the time because look at how slow this drive roller is moving. And we have to go a good five or six feet throughout the entire liner. So it might take a second, just give it a minute and keep it going. Cause you can see the wire going in inside the machine. So it has to be going somewhere. If you don't see it balling up, if you see it balling up somewhere, absolutely stop. But we have nothing balling up. It looks like it's feeding really smoothly. So we're just gonna keep depressing the trigger and wait for it to come out the end of the gun. Right, so as I was waiting for it to come out the end of the gun, I actually disassembled the, the tip of this to make sure that the contact tip that was installed was the correct one. Now we can see on it, it actually does say 0.0803 wire. So this is the correct one. If this, I have taken this out just so you can see. If this is not the correct one, all you have to do is get the little tool that Yes Welder sends, find the correct one, and it's just a regular screw in. Just screw it in, make sure it's tight, and then you can, now we see the wires coming out the end, put this back on and we are almost good to go. We just have one more setting to do and that's wire tension. Set wire tension, it's gonna be this knob right here. If you screw it clockwise, you're adding tension. If you go counterclockwise, you're actually taking tension away. Now, this is kind of a feel thing. And what you're gonna do is you're actually gonna put your fingers on either side of the wire and try to pinch it, right? Okay, I can stop the wire. See this, the wheel will stop turning it's just not coming out anymore. If I can squeeze the wire and stop the feed, you are running too little wire tension. So I'm gonna give it a couple spins and do it again. Okay, I can still stop the wire, so we need a little bit more tension. A couple more spins. Okay, I can no longer stop the wire. So I'm gonna give it just a little bit, like a quarter turn more. And now I know my wire tension is good and we are ready to start welding. That's that folks, setting up Yes Welder's MIG 205DS initial setup from the box, out of the factory, to you, to your home to get welding. Now, let's say you have a Yes Welder MIG welder, but it's not the MIG 205DS. All the internals are the same or similar. The principles are the same. Follow this video and get to welding today. So until next time, enjoy welding with Yes Welder.